Good morning. Today we will be performing a respiratory assessment and identifying an asthma exacerbation. Now let's watch this video that shows us example of an asthma exacerbation. Would you recognize an asthma exacerbation? If you know the symptoms, you can save a life. Quick response time causes better outcomes. As we saw in the video, the signs and symptoms of an asthma exacerbation include the following. Coughing, wheezing, rapid breathing. It can have tightness, tightness in the chest, difficulty talking, and the person can be pale and diaphoretic. The purpose of our class today is to ensure that all nursing students can do the following. They can perform a respiratory assessment. They can identify signs and symptoms of an asthma exacerbation. They can briefly discuss the basic pathophysiology of an asthma exacerbation, and they can discuss possible interventions. For our learning outcomes, at the conclusion of this class, the nursing students will be able to demonstrate a respiratory assessment and identify wheezing. This presentation is targeted to an undergraduate nurse class and will be conducted in the classroom setting. The following materials are required for this class. A stethoscope, pulse oximetry, oxygen tubing and oxygen or simulated oxygen, a computer, access to the internet and YouTube, and our physical assessment textbook and pathophysiology textbook. Other technology resources that are needed are the computer, an internet connection, cable for your internet connection, and YouTube access. Let's begin our respiratory assessment. We will begin by observing the patient's breath. What is the rate of the breath? Observe the rhythm. Is the patient taking deep breaths or shallow, quick breaths? What is the effort? Listen for wheezing. Observe the shape of the chest. We will continue to inspect the chest for deformities and asymmetry. We will look for retractions. We will now begin palpation. Posteriorly, we will feel for abnormalities. We will test for chest expansion. And then we will feel for tactile fremitus. We will then begin percussion posteriorly in a ladder-like pattern. We will then begin auscultation with our stethoscopes, also using a ladder-like pattern. This will be done both posteriorly and anteriorly. We will then assess for oxygen saturation using a pulse oximeter. We will apply oxygen or simulated oxygen if needed. We will each now find a partner and we will demonstrate a respiratory assessment on each other. We will take a break from the presentation and we will resume after our respiratory assessments are completed. Thank you for demonstrating your respiratory assessment skills. Now we will resume the presentation. Let's talk about the pathophysiology of an asthma exacerbation. If there is an allergen or an irritant exposure, it can begin the asthma exacerbation process. It happens because of immune activation of IL-1 
IL-4 IgE production and mast cell de degranulation. This can cause hemotactic mediators, cellular infiltration with neutrophils, lymphocytes, and eosinophils. It also causes vasoactive mediators and vasodilation with increased capillary permeability. With these occurrences, what happens is bronchospasm, vascular congestion, increased mucus secretion, impaired mucociliary function, which can lead to thickening of airway walls, increased contractile response to bronchial smooth muscle, with ultimately bronchial hyperresponsiveness and airway obstruction. What are the possible pharmacological interventions? The fast-acting beta agonist bronchodilators will be used, such as albuterol. You also may see a corticosteroid use, such as budazonide, also known as pulmacort. Now let's go to this YouTube video that gives us a good representation of the healthy and unhealthy lung sounds, including, including wheezing, which goes along with our asthma exacerbation. These are the teaching and learning strategies that were used during this class. Students were to review respiratory assessment pathophysiology of an acute asthma exacerbation prior to class. Then we had a discussion regarding the signs and symptoms of respiratory distress, basic pathophysiology of an acute asthma exacerbation, and basic pharmacological interventions. We then reviewed the steps of a respiratory assessment we demonstrated a respiratory assessment with our partners. Lastly, we identified the difference between clear lung sounds and wheezing using a YouTube video. Accommodations are available for differentiated instruction. For those who are hearing impaired, digital stethoscopes are available. For those who need extra time, who have English as a second second language, um, a quiet environment can be provided and extra time and instruction are also available for those people who need this. That concludes our class for today. Thank you for joining.